I want to welcome you to week one of a study in 2 Corinthians. You know, last week, we finished the last week, 27 weeks we had in the book of 1 Corinthians. And this week starts a, a series of study in 2 Corinthians. You know, this study has has been going on since June 21st of 2021. We started on this bookmark. And I want to encourage you, if you don't have one of these in him scripture bookmarks, get in contact with us. I'll be glad to send you one. won't cost you anything. Just contact me on the website, the-prodigalson.com, and I'll send you one. And and get into this study with us. This in him scripture study study has turned into something that that just is is thrilling to see what God is doing in in this world we live in to teach people who they are in Christ Jesus. You know, I never understood. I've said this before, but I never understood why God wanted me to do this podcast and to basically record everything. That I done everything that I wherever where I preached, I the Lord said stu- to to record this, and up until this year, just the last part of 2022, I started seeing and understanding why, because this is the doors are opening this ministry to reach out to the jails and the prisons of this country, to the inmates of this country, and to their families, and and from from their families. It's going around the world. It's going around the world to teach people who they are in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Not teach them a bunch of religion. Not put them in, in a place that, that they, they've been their entire life. And that's, you know, we're pulling them out of that, that religious place that they, they feel like they're just, they're just, just people that have, that'll never change. It's always making mistakes. No, we want the world to come to realize and know just how important they are to God and just how important they hate that he has made them to be in Christ Jesus. You know, we're part of a, of a church. The born-again children of God that, that live on this planet today are part of God's church, and we all have a, have a part to play in God's kingdom in this church, to help people see and and find out what God has said about them for their entire life, for their entire Christian life. Because when you become a a born-again child of God, when you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, God don't look at you the way He's uh, the way He looked at you up until that point. No, He starts looking at you through the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you come to that understanding of who God has made you to be in Christ Jesus, it'll change the way you look at yourself. It'll change the way you look at people around you. Because when you start looking through the eyes of God, through the eyes of His Word and what He has written down for you to live in, when you start looking at the world like that and you start seeing who you are in Christ Jesus, then you can start believing and, and, and ministering to people the way you ought to be ministering to them with the love and the mercy and the grace that God has bestowed upon you and start loving people and lifting them up and showing them just how much God loves them and just what they can be in Christ Jesus if they're not born again, or who they are in Him if they are. Thank God today for all that He's showing us in His Word. Glory to God. Now, once again, my prayers come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to know the love and the mercy and the grace and the goodness that God had for them. And that is my desire that every person that walks the face of this planet come to realize and understand the depth and the height and the width of God's love and have their spiritual eyes open that, that he's for them, not against them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, 
who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he opens my eyes more and more every day to his word. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm excited to uh, get started on Second Corinthians or the the book of Second Corinthians because there's there's so much in this book and I'm not I'm not going to go down go start breaking it down but we want to get started on what God's word says what Paul was speaking to the to the to the Corinthians in the in his second book it says grace be to you this is Second Corinthians one and two. And this is in the King James Version. It says, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's pretty much self-explanatory. He was he was bidding grace and peace to every one of them. You know, we've talked about it all back through 1 Corinthians, but the Corinthian church, the the, the whole city of Corinth was was a was a was a mess and and that church was was there was a lot of things going on but one thing i saw in first corinthians that that paul never gave up on them he just kept kept trying to mold them and help them and and this second book is is going to be that much more richer let me read what what the second corinthians 1 and 2 in the new living say New Living Translation says, it says, May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Uh, This Amplified Classic says, Grace, favor, and spiritual blessings to you and heart peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. I I can't read this scripture without thinking back to... to, uh, to the scripture that when Jesus was talking, he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. There's nothing, nothing no greater than the peace that, that God puts in our hearts and in our lives when, when we come to realize and understand that, that what he has done in our lives has changed us, has, has moved us and, and put us in a, in a, in a different light. And, when I come to understand this, I was talking to a guy yesterday, and it was just a, 
It was like everything that I'd ever dealt with in my life just just came back so I could I could emphasize to him what I had dealt with so that he could overcome his his uh his need and and overcome the things that have come, that had come against him. And and it is so true that God's unmerited favor, God's grace, and the peace that Jesus Christ has has afforded us, has given us, and 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 let us come to understand the in the in the in the truth of God's word, in the truth of Paul's epistles in God's word, that how much we can count on him. You know, I, I didn't know for a lot of years. I had no idea, idea where I stood with God. I didn't. I knew I'd given my heart and life to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and made him Lord. But but I had such a hard time dealing with my past. Well, I mean, if I'd, I, if, and I'd read, I'd read the word, and I'd read it where it says, you know, God, if God forgives you, he, he never brings it up again. There's so many scriptures in, in the Bible in Second Corinthians uh, five nineteen comes to mind comes to mind. It says it says God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses against him. In other words, he said, Look, I, God was our heavenly father was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself. In other words, buying us back, uh, restoring a friendly relation back unto mankind through the sacrifice that Jesus made. And he said, I'm not going to hold your sins against you. Other places he says, he, he said, I will choose not to remember it ever again. And it is so true that 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 what that is what God wants us to do, or want, uh, God wants us to know he done. And when we come to that place in our lives that that we come to realize that that the the religion that we have we have had thrown at us and 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 ingrained in us over the years it's just that religion because God's not that unpleasable tyrant that religion has made him to be God's not that bipolar old man that sits on his throne with a hammer in one hand, a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for somebody somebody to mess up. No, he's that loving father of Luke 15 that that was standing looking, looking out at the horizon, waiting on his son that had left and 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 went out into the world and got himself in a mess. He was standing there waiting on him. And when he come home, he didn't shame him, didn't condemn him. But the Bible says that he ran. He ran to him and, and fell on his neck and kissed him, hugged his neck, in other words, and, and put a robe on his back. The Bible says he brought the, he said, bring the best robe. He put a robe on that, on that boy's back and shoes on his feet and a ring on his finger. And and that signet ring meant something to him and everybody else around there. And that was that, that he was part of the family. Even though he had messed up and made so so many mistakes, that father loved him. That is a picture of God, our Heavenly Father. And that is a picture of God's grace. That that unmerited favor that that he has he has given us through the sacrifice that Jesus made. And, and, and those actions are our acts of, of, of peace, wanting that young man to understand where he stood. Now, I've seen a lot of parents and grandparents just, I'm talking about pour out the wrath of shame and condemnation on their children or grandchildren, and 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 just ain't you ashamed for what you have done? But I want you to under, understand something that might make you feel a little, feel better about make, belittling somebody about their mistakes, but that's not godly at all. 
because I told them last night at our uh, weekly uh, in him scripture study meeting, I said, I said, listen, I said, I've told this over and over and over again in my lifetime that, that I've asked people numerous times, do you know how many times God condemned me and shamed me when I come back to him? And it's always a big zero. None. He didn't condemn me or shame me at all. He he tried to help me, and he did help me, important me to his word to to uh to to mold me to where I should be. But he never once shamed me. He never brought up my past. A lot of people brought up my past, but God never did. And that is His grace and His peace at work. Like I said, Paul wanted the Corinthians to know grace and peace unto you, God's unmerited favor, and Jesus, the peace. I'm talking about the peace that Christ Jesus brings to people through the salvation that he died to give us. It it thrills me to look back from the and in the last since June 21st of 2021, June, the June of this year will be two years we've been in this, this In Him Scripture study. You say, well, we're in a, a study in Second Corinthians now. Yes, we are. But it's always been pointed, always been directed in teaching people what God says about them instead of how they feel, instead of pouring a bunch of, Shame and condemnation on them. No, God wants us to realize and understand that Jesus died. He was condemned on that cross. He was put in open shame on that cross for us so that we could walk free of all the junk that we have, we have brought on ourselves in this lifetime and, and walk free of that and understand that Jesus Christ died to give us that grace and that peace, that love and that mercy that I want the world to come to understand and realize what God done for them and what he has made them to be in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. That is so important. I've said it over and over again on this podcast and all over everywhere I've ever, I've ever preached, I I make it a point to make sure that people understand and to know that that God's for you. He loves you and he cares for you and wants more than anything in the world for you to know it. He does. And he's not holding your sin against you. No, he loves you and he wants you to come back. All he wants you to do is repent. And if you've never been born again, all he wants you to do is make Jesus Lord. And he'll straighten you out. I promise you he will. Quit trying to straighten yourself out. Come to the one that can straighten you out. And that's Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. That brings me to the question I always ask on this podcast. Are you born again? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Because if he is, I promise you, I promise you, He's standing with open arms wanting you to come home to him. Just turn around and come home and love you. But if if he's not your Lord and Savior, he's still standing there with loving, open arms wanting you to make him Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. He'll save you today if you'll confess him as Lord and believe in your heart that God done what he said he done and that raised him from the dead to justify you. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. Make him Lord. Make him Savior. Let him save you and show you just exactly where he wants you to be in him, to walk in him and operate in the grace and the peace that he has for every human being on this planet. 
All we have to do is run to him. May Jesus Christ, the Lord of your life today, and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. I am so glad to be able to bring you this podcast. And I want you to go to our website. Go to our website. It's the dash prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. Download this pod, this podcast app and and get these podcasts come daily to your to your uh phone. Automatically, you can you can set it up for it. You download it automatically. And and it's easy. It's easy and you can you can get fed six days a week. I take off on Saturday, and but I, but there's a podcast every other day of the week comes out on this podcast, and and we want you to have it. It don't cost anything. There's no excuse, no cost for you. I thank God for that that ability to do that, and that brings me to thanking the partners. Partners, thank you for all you do, sowing into this ministry helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his love, his word away all over this planet. And when people see God's love, they'll always be seeing it through his word. Thank you, partners. I thank God for faithful partners that are helping us do what God has called and commissioned us to do, and that is to teach people who Jesus Christ has made them to be through the salvation that is free to them. Even though, even if they're not born again, I want them, I want them to know what, that if that they can be born again and run, run to Him. Glory to God! I thank God for the ability to do this. And partners, you got a part in it. Oh, I pray Mark ten twenty nine and thirty over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.